What's up YouTube? Today I have some exciting news. I found out that Epson is releasing two new laser 4K projectors. All right, so I was browsing the internet and I decided to search to see if there's any new projectors coming out from Epson. JBC just released some new projectors and I'm like, man, what's, what's the deal, Epson? Like, when are you guys gonna, you know, come with some competitive products? Well, it turns out that about a week or two ago, they released some information on some new projectors. So I'm gonna take you over to the computer and I'm gonna show you those two new projectors and all the specs. All right, so I am at projectorscreen.com and this is the information that I found. I'm not sure what the date on this article is. I think it came out like a week ago or something. I actually just, I found it by accident, not accident, but I was searching for to see if Epson had any new projectors coming out and sure enough they did and I found this article, so. Looks like there's gonna be two new projectors, the Epson 5060 and the Epson 6060. That's not official, it's just this projector screen.com. They're assuming that that's what these new projectors are gonna, are gonna be dubbed. So the official name of the projectors are Epson EHLS 12000B and the EHLS 11000W. So, they're new laser projectors, 4K laser projectors. And this is a step up. It looks like they're trying to compete with the other laser projectors that are coming out. I think uh, JVC's new, newest projectors that they, they just released are all laser. So, it's good to see that Epson is jumping on board with that. That should have a, a much, much better lifespan on the excuse me, on the bulb. Well, there won't be a bulb because it's laser. So you won't have to worry about replacing that. But let's look at some of the, some of the specs. So both of these are laser. The fork, it has 4K image, a 4K image processing chip delivering 4K resolution. So it sounds like this is native 4K. It doesn't say anything about E-Shift. I couldn't find anything about E-Shift on here. So it has a two and a half million to one dynamic contrast ratio. 4K resolution, 8.3 million pixels, HDR 10 plus. So yeah, it, it looks like this is gonna be native 4K and it's about time, Epson. 4K E-Shift is nice and it works, but it's nice to see. And again, I can't find anything that says that this is not 4K E-Shift, so I'll have to reach out to them and see if I can get a an official comment as to whether it's E-Shift or 4K, but in the wording, it doesn't say anything about E-Shift, so I'm assuming that this is 4K with 8.3 million pixels. Uh, that sounds like it's native 4K. 4K. Two and a half million to one dynamic contrast ratio, that's, that's very, very good. So the Epson 5040 is one million to one. So that's, that's pretty awesome. It's got 85% of the DCI PE3 th color space. It would have been nice to see a hundred there, but I'm still, I'm sure it's still gonna look very, very good. It has 4K frame interpolation and 4K super resolution. Now this I'm curious about because on the Epson 5040, you can't enable the 4K interpolation on 4K E-Shift. It only works on 1080p. I know that, you know, frame interpolation is a mixed bag for some people. Some people hate it. Some people like it. Some people don't care for it. I think it has its advantages depending on 
the source. So, you know, if it's 23.976, 24 FPS, you know, when there's when there's panning or there's some really fast moving action scenes, there's there's input lag. There's blur. And it would be nice to see you know, what the interpolation does. Sony has really good 4K interpolation. It, it works pretty good, at least on the setting that I use on my TV in the living room. It's an old TV, it's from 2013. And I believe I keep it on the smooth setting and it works pretty good. So it'll be interesting to see if this 4K frame interpolation will actually work on 4K material this time. So lumens. So 2700 lumens on the 12,000B and 2500 lumens on the 11,000W. Now, I believe this is really the only difference between the two is the lumens. So 2500 lumens, that's about, I think, what the 54, mine, 5040 UB. And I think most of them, even the newer ones, are around 2500. 2700, that's not going to be that big of a difference, at least not to me because my room is light controlled so if you have a dedicated home theater and your room is light controlled that 200 lumens is probably not going to make very much of a difference see these higher lumen levels allow these projectors to produce sharp colorful images particularly when you pair it with an ambient light rejecting cinema screen yeah and that's you know for people who have a lot of ambient light in the room i don't have that problem so i'm not going to worry about that the long-lasting laser light source of the Epson 12,000B and 11,000W give users up to 10 years of movie watching enjoyment. That's crazy. However, they don't say how many actual hours it is. So I don't know if that's, they're saying 10 years and however many hours that is within 10 years. I need to, need to calculate that. But that, that's crazy. You're not going to replace this thing or have to replace it for probably 20 years because nobody's going to watch or use the projector 24 hours a day for 10 years so that's that's the huge advantage with laser projection okay let's see so 4k resolution 120 that's big for gamers that's something that you know projectors haven't really been able to do until now uh, jvc does it JVC even does 8K E shift. So 4K 120, and then obviously it'll do 4K 60. So here's the key features here 4K resolution, 8.3 million pixels, over 2.5 million to 1 contrast ratio, 85% of the color space DCI, 4K super resolution, 4K frame interpolation, scene adaptive gamma correction. I'm assuming that's like HDR, like frame adapt, kind of like what JVC calls their frame adapt HDR. I'm assuming that that's what this is and they just called it something different. I don't know. I'll have to ask them about that too. Instant off. I don't, I don't know what that, that means. I guess you can, I don't know. Doesn't sound like that's a feature that I would care about, but laser light source, HDMI 2.1, 4K 120. The only thing that I don't see on here is any type of AKE shift because I I thought that HDMI 2.1 was capable of 8K, but it doesn't say that. So I don't know if that's not even a function of this projector or if it's going to come in a later update. I, I don't know, but it'll be interesting to see if it can do that. But again, 8K is not very widely supported. There's, I mean, there's no 8K content. There's no Blu-ray. There may be some things that are streaming, but I highly doubt it. You would need a massive amount of, you know, data, or your 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 ISP would need to be exceptional in order to stream something 8K. I know some of the TVs can upscale, and like I said, the JVC projectors can do 8K upscaling, E shift, but. And I'm, sh I'm assuming if it was 8K, it would drive the cost up. Which brings me to my next point. The Epson 5060 and the 6060, if that's what they're going to be called, $5,500 and $5,900. So that is not cheap. That's the only pretty much disconcerting thing for me. 
I'm at a point where I do want to upgrade my projector. I've had it for since I believe 2017 and I would like to get the HDMI 2.1 and get the 4K 120, but $5,500 is a lot. Now for what this projector is or these projectors are offering, $5,500 really isn't that bad compared to the JVC that are like eight or nine thousand dollars which is ridiculous I don't know who can afford that unless you're just filthy rich but I don't think fifty five hundred dollars is like an absurd price that that you know you can save up for it's I'd say it's fairly reasonable to save up for that maybe you can trade in some equipment or something again it's still a lot of money more money than I can afford right now I am excited about these projectors and I would love to get one and and maybe I'll save up for it because while I do want to upgrade some of my speakers the biggest thing that I would like to upgrade is going to be my projector so and knowing that it's laser knowing that it's going to last you know at least 10 years I feel like it's going to pay for itself in the long run but as far as, you know, $5,900, I'm not going to pay $400 just to get, you know, however many lumens it was extra. Or was it? Yeah, $400 for 200 lumens? I don't, I don't need that. And that looks like that's really the only, only difference between the two. So, new projectors coming out soon. Um, it says, we expect the USA... We'll release these projectors. Uh, oh, that's the wrong. Oh, here it is. October or November 2021. So it's already October. I haven't seen anything. I looked on Amazon. I couldn't find anything. So I'm assuming it's probably going to be November, which would make sense because it would be around the holidays. And, you know, I don't know if they're going to go on sale, especially when they're first released, but... For those of you that are looking to upgrade and like Epson, Epson has really good features for the price. So, you know, bang for your buck. This is going to be a lot of money for a lot of people. But again, I, I feel like it, if you're at a place where you can save up for it, however long, you know, maybe a year, maybe a year and a half, two years, six months, I don't know. I feel like this isn't too crazy to save up for. If you have the money to just plop it down and buy it outright, great. But this is going to be something that I think I would like to eventually get. And I would have to obviously save up for it. So let me know in the comments if you guys are looking to upgrade. If you guys are going to upgrade to the new Epson projectors, which one are you guys looking to get? Are you going to get the... You know, 5060 or the 6060. Again, I don't know if it's going to be called that officially, but exciting news for, for Epson projector lovers. All right, so this is great news. I'm really excited about these new projectors. So one thing that I'm excited about is this hasn't been confirmed. I re did reach out to Epson for confirmation, but it looks like these new laser projectors are native. 4k with 8.1 million pixels so i searched all over the internet i couldn't find anything about these new projectors being 4k e-shipped so hopefully that's a good sign hopefully that means we're finally getting you know native 4k and a lot of the other competitors are starting to come out with native 4k projectors now and also it has 4k 120 so that's big news for gamers i'm not too concerned about that because the max FPS that I can get is 60 frames per second and that's because of my receiver it came out you know some years ago 4k 120 wasn't even a thing but it is nice to know that if you buy one of these projectors you'll basically be future proofing yourself even if you don't have 4k 120 capability and it's not something that I'm really I really need I do game I do have an Xbox Series X but right now the only thing I'm playing is baseball so it looks fine for me it's not something that I'm really too concerned about so if you're looking for a 4k 120 projector Epson has 
what you need. So one feature that I'm really curious about, and I hope it's a feature on these new projectors, I couldn't find anything, but these new projectors have HDMI 2.1. And I looked it up, HDMI 2.1, just to be sure, HDMI 2.1 supports 8K. So I don't know if these new projectors will either have 8K E-Shift or some type of 8K upscaling. But I have my iPad here and I'm going to read what the HDMI 2.1 spec says. All right, so this is from HDMI.org. HDMI 2.1 specification. The HDMI 2.1 specification supports a range of higher video resolutions and refresh rates, including 8K 60, 4K 120, obviously, and resolutions up to 10K. I didn't know that. I don't know what the FPS on that is, but I assume it would be low. But you're not going to see that in any projector or TV anytime soon, probably the next 5, even 10 years. But dynamic HDR formats are also supported and bandwidth capability is increased to 48 gigabits per second. So HDMI 2.1 is capable of 8K60 and I assume 8K30, 8K24 FPS. So this is very interesting because, like I said, I couldn't find anything on these projectors stating that it can do any type of 8K, whether it's E-Shift or upconverting. The announcements for these new projectors was basically just released a couple weeks ago. There's not a whole lot of information. So maybe 8K is going to be supported in one way or another, and they just haven't stated it yet. But I'm very interested. I reached out to Epson. Hopefully they'll reply back and let me know if 8K is supported on these receivers in one way or another. Another cool feature on these laser projectors is that it's laser, so there's no bulb. And because it's laser, it drastically increases the lifespan of your projector. So on the site, it said that this projector will last you up to 10 years. And I did the math. That comes out to 87,600 hours. 87,600 hours. That is insane. So obviously this projector is going to last you for years to come. And the only thing that I'm curious about is at what point does degradation start to, to come in into play? You know, it's laser, so the light is going to be very bright. It's going to last for a long time. But at what point does Epson recommend you, you know, get a new projector? I assume that's going to be something that people won't have to worry about for a very long time if they buy this projector, but it is something to think about, something to consider for those of us that use our projectors very much or for most of our movie watching. These new projectors also come with Kalman software. Now Kalman, I had never really heard of it, but I looked it up and it's a calibration software and it seems to be pretty legit. It's a software that a lot of companies and I think even professional companies use for calibration. So it seems like Epson is really trying to, to stay up to date with the technology. I know JVC has software that you can use and third-party software that you can use to calibrate the projectors. So this is good. I'm really excited about this too because trying to calibrate your projector without any type of software is it's very hard. And even trying to look on the internet to find something to calibrate your Epson 50, 5040, 50-50, it's pretty much non-existent. So the fact that they are implementing this into their new projectors is, it's going to be nothing but good things for those of us who want to dial in our projector and get the best picture possible. Now let's talk about the price. $5,500 for the, the base model. That's a lot of money. But as I said in the video, I kind of feel like for the features that you're getting, it's really not that crazy, at least the price. Now, $5,500 is a lot of money no matter what you're buying. But the fact that you're going to be using this projector pretty much every day, you're going to be able to have it for years to come. It comes with calibration software. Hopefully, it's native 4K. If there's any type of 8K implementation, then you're really getting a lot for your money compared to companies like JVC where you have to spend almost 
10 grand to get some of the pretty much the same features. So $5,500, I think that that's pretty much reasonable to save up for over time. I don't think it's something that's gonna be a deal breaker for a lot of people, especially if you've already spent two or three grand on a projector before. Maybe you can sell some things, sell some products. I would like to upgrade and it is gonna take me a while to, to be able to buy a projector that costs fifty five hundred dollars but in the long run I want to buy something that is going to be future-proof and I've started thinking about it already and and I think that this is a projector that I would like to try and save up for Epson makes really good products they've never failed me you know the only thing that that will really fail you is going to be the bulb so the fact that they went laser it's 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 really nice to see them step that up and you know you're probably paying for the Kalman software and some of the other features that they that they've added but in the long run I think it's going to end up paying for itself so it's just one of those things that you know for us home theater enthusiasts you always want to upgrade and you know like I said you can sell some things maybe you have some old electronics that are lying around that you can sell to friends or you can put on eBay or some other site and that'll just help with the cost Alright guys, well I'm super excited about these new projectors. Let me know in the comments, are you guys going to upgrade? Which one are you looking at getting? Is $5,500 too much? What do you think? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.